Okay, thank you so much, Omar, for uh, such a generous introduction. Um, I'm honored to be among you. I'm honored to be uh, one of the, the uh, speakers in the series. So, so thank you so much, Omar, and thank you so much, Nada, and, and others who have been working to organize uh, making this, this possible conversation. Yes, this is a personal journey. Um, and um, this is um, somehow um, methodologically um, maybe related to, to the book you mentioned, Omar, Autoethnography of Borders. And I, I, I will come back to this autoethnography, which is about linking experiences. Um, so I became interested in x-rays uh, uh, of very uh, personal reason, and this, is, uh, this has to do with, with my father's uh, illness, uh, which is, and, and all these started in November last year. Um, but before that, I will give you uh, some background. And uh, after this background, I want to invite you to look at some photos with me from my uh, personal photo album of X-rays. Um, and I have a PowerPoint to, to share with you. Um, okay, um, it works? Good, okay. Um, Our ways to perceive our bodies and our senses changed dramatically in the 19th century through a series of inventions, uh, photography, cinema, gramophones, and during the last years of the 1890 X-rays, when Wilhelm Konrad Röntgen realized that he had discovered something extraordinary he asked his wife, Anna Berta Ludwig, to come to his working place. And um, the first X-ray photo was produced. This is her hand. And of course, her wedding ring is, is um, following in the, the photo. After this soon fascination to see inside the body caused what some writers ca uh, call X-ray mania among wealthy people. And of course, in, in all of them, rings never were forgotten in the photos. So one of these photos is X-ray uh, of hands of King George and Queen Mary on the uh, right side. And, and on the uh, left side app, you see X-ray of the hands of Alexandra, Empress of Russia. And this is from 1895, 1996, 97. Um, and these X-rays photos of hands as intimate photographs uh, became something women gave to their lovers, to their partners, to their husbands. Um, and, and this was before, you know, um, uh, people get know that, that uh, the danger of X-rays. So, so wealthy people stopped using them. But it continues in, in the early uh, last century. And Thomas Mann in his uh, The Magic Mountains from 1924, uh, in his uh, masterpiece of, of literature, he wrote about, you know, about X-rays and how X uh, protagonists in, in this fiction uh, carry um, their X-ray photos in their wallet and they give them to each other. And Claudia, which is the main female figure in the roman, in the, the story, in the fiction, gave Castro um, her X-ray before she leave, uh, left uh, sanatorium as a uh, souvenir. And as Castro put it, it that X-ray photo meant for him more than an ordinary photo. Um, and this is not coincident that the female body became the main target of X-ray mania. X-ray is part of the visual field and the visual field is not neutral. 
The gaze is a hierarchical interwoven complex of gender, race, and class aspects. It's a kind of, um, it, this X-ray of photos open a new way for voyeurism to look inside the female body, to expose the private part of the female body to the male gaze. Through the first half and even in the um, 1950s, um, X-ray technology became part of controlling and disciplining, but also commodifying the female body. X-ray became evidence of physically fitness and perfect figure. As you see, this is from 1956. Uh, beauty contest, beauty uh, pageant. Uh, I think it is uh, Chicago. And uh, to, to show uh, inner beauty that, that inside is also beautiful was part of competition. Uh, so this was very usual uh, uh, recurrent uh, images coming out from beauty, um, uh, beauty contestation. And um, in in United Kingdom, um, 1944, the British government made an educating film for education uh, of workers about advantages of X-ray screening. It was for uh, detecting uh, tuberculosis. Um, so in the end of the, the film, Mary, which is a white young uh, worker, uh, woman uh, dedicate x-rays of her uh, chest to her lover, Tom. And uh, as we saw in the ring, in um, the rings, uh, the ma ma uh, marriage rings in, in the previous images, um, all these uh, are telling us about the patriarchal gaze and the desire of ownership of female body. And let's let's watch this movie. It is about one minute or something. So uh, as you saw in the video clip, it's, it's about not only sexism, but also disciplining uh, workers' body. And this is the, the, how, how sexism and, and class uh, 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 discipline um, uh, overlap each other. Um, and also it's interesting to see that the, the, the male gaze, you know, it, it's very, very obvious in the, as you, you could see in the, the video clip. Um, after the Second World War, also expansion of X-ray mammography was part of this construction of the normal breast. So, so all these happen in the name of healthcare and, and uh, caring about uh, people's and citizens' uh, health. Lisa Cartwright, in her book, Screening the Body, writes, X-ray is not an image of the body, it is an image of the body being imagined. 
So this is about how, uh, you know, it's not about objective uh, 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 scientific evidence of inner part of our bodies, but this is very much about uh, uh, how uh, bodies are, um, are um, imagined. And the visual field of X-rays are not only sexualized, but also racialized. In this picture, we see uh, Horst Schumann, a Nazi officer who in Auschwitz exposed men and women to huge amounts of X-rays um, in, in, order, in order and for sterilizing and castration experiments he did on Jewish bodies. And this is from early last century that some scientists uh, uh, wrote about or, or ex had ex did experiments about how using uh, X-rays to kill uh, pigmentations and turning black people white. Of course, it failed and it damaged a lot of uh, you know bodies. Uh, but it was interesting to, to see how race and, and science is, is uh, going hand in hand in, in, um, in, the, uh, in, in this world. Um, and you remember diamond rings in the hands uh, of uh, wealthy people, uh, wealthy women signifying wealth and ar uh, aristocracy. And this is another, um, another picture using uh, X-ray, showing that how, how X-ray technology was used for detecting diamonds hidden the bodies of black workers who work in mines in South Africa. So white officers and experts with X-ray technology, and you see long queue of black workers naked to be screened. They were presumed guilty until proven innocent. Um, as Walter Benjamin put it, there is no document of civilization which is not at the same time a document of barbarism. So we see that the same technology which have been used for saving and caring, for saving life, um, for healthcare, uh, for, and also for intimacy and love, expression and love and, and um, passion, has been used for exposing bodies of black uh, workers to culture of suspicion, culture of disbelief and criminalization. And this culture of disbelief and, and criminalization still is used against asylum seekers, uh, asylum seeking minors for uh, age assessment. So, um, these asylum seekers who, who say they are younger than 18, they are not believed. So they are exposed to, to uh, a very complex uh, uh, examination of the bodies, X-rays of knees, X-rays of teeth. Um, so and they are pres presumed liars until proven innocent. So this is very much Foucaultian that yeah, that Foucault wrote about externalization of the internal, that X-rays are a science, a scientific evidence to, to extract the truth out of the bodies of asylum seekers. So, so until then, the, there is no truth. So they don't believe what they say. Uh, the main question, are you your body? Um, and there is no need for, for asylum seekers stories. There is no need to, to, to know why she's there. Uh, X-rays of knees, knees and, and teeth are, are enough. So there is no need to, to hear her stories. Um, and this is uh, very much um, interesting and has to do uh, with uh, science and, and the positivist uh, approach to science that the thing speaks for itself. So the power of X-ray is exactly this. It speaks for itself. Before X-rays, doctors try to detect um, illnesses through touching and hearing. Uh, but after X-rays, so doctors no, had no need of the body 
or the words of the patient. So this is exactly the same to asylum seekers. Uh, and of course, these photos, these X-rays photos of for age assessment should be interpreted. And so, and, and so there is no consensus about what they tell us. Um, and one, one interesting example is from France and, um, and um, there is um, this atlas, um, this atlas, uh, uh, Grulich Pied Atlas, uh, produced um, in the first half of the last century is this atlas is based on thousands x-rays taken from middle class white Americans and that atlas still is used as a reference for age assessment of asylum seekers coming from Afghanistan or Syria or Somalia today. So their reference is this, the white body from 80 years ago. This is a, a chapter in the book I am a co-editor for a French anthropologist uh, wrote about. Um, okay, um, so, and, and this X-ray has been uh, used for bordering uh, and border uh, control in different ways. And, um, and the paradigmatic scene of the war today is undoubtedly this one, like this one, a picture like this one, a picture of bodies squeezed between pallet inside a truck, trying to cross border. Um, so this is taken of huge X-ray camera on the border between uh, Guatemala and Mexico. Uh, and if you Google, you, you see huge number of these kind of uh, uh, photos. So they have to be invisibilized. They have to be unseen or rather seen as commodities to be able to cross the borders. They cannot cross border as human bodies, human beings. The X-ray images show the naked white bodies on a black background a silhouette of human beings. Metaphorically, human bodies are displayed also naked of political rights. And this is, uh, this nakedness is, is uh, a central, um, um, central here because they cannot cross the border as human being. the border uh, to be able to cross border, they need to be something more than human beings. They need to be a citizen. They need to be uh, documented. They need to have a visa, et cetera. So be a human being is not enough. And th this is metaphorically a strong image of, of nakedness. Um, and this is another one uh, uh, from uh, Morocco. Um, uh, trying to be smuggled uh, out to, to Spain. Um, and um, um, again, trying to, to be unseen as a human being, but seen as commodity to be able to cross the border. The other is unseen, while paradoxically, being exposed to demand for total transparency and no ability. Stranger, be their border transgressors or racialized citizens are deprived of human face. Well, at the same time, everything about them is screened, simplified, documented, and explained. A complex apparatus of illumination of otherness is at work from bureaucratic paperwork in the form of passport, visa application, or asylum process to bodily uh, visual documentation um, the for, uh, from fingerprint, biometric data, dental or bone x-rays for age assessment, etc. All to render the other transparent and knowable. The penetrating gaze of X-rays has changed our vision of the inside of human being, uh, human body. This technology developed during the period of time that was characterized by demand of total transparency and knowability. This is um, the, um, 
uh, Edward Glassens, the, the poet and philosopher from uh, Martinique. And he, he, he wrote about the colonial demand of transparency, that, that the colonial demand to know, to understand everything about the other. And understanding here is not a, a, a sympathetic form of you know, understanding, but understanding in terms of comprehension. Comprehension meaning to grasp, to seize, to hold. This is the violence of domination is, is, is very much um, embedded in, in, in this demand of understanding and demand of transparency. Bordering practices refers to more than just lines separating states and include more actors and states, more practices, more economies and histories. Um, bordering practices are based on a regime of visibility and various technologies are developed from watchtowers and drones to biometric passport and checkpoints to ensure the visibility. Of course, that this visibility is a form of documentation and surveillance and not visibility as recognition. The border regime of visibilities and all technique of, to regulate mobility of undesirable groups. The, this technique was used against German Jews uh, whose passport was marked with the red J. Uh, also, we had uh, Lantern Law in New York, 1713 as um, Simone Brown, um, uh, uh, Brown wrote about uh, in her book. Um, um, I, I, about that, uh, that, and that was a demand that every uh, black uh, person um, older than 14, if they coming out in night, they had to have a candle in their hand. So they should be, visible, seeable, observable, trace, traceable. Uh, and this is, this is what I taught, illuminating the other, uh, otherness, what, which is uh, Simon Brown's uh, words. So this was this, let's uh, look at uh, my, my photo album. This is an X-ray of X-ray photo of my friend Reza, a young man from Afghanistan who paid a lot of money for this X-ray, and this was demanded by uh, by um, uh, United Kingdom, where where he applied the visa for for studying. So um, he he was sent to a to a clinic in Kabul and he paid a lot of money for, for doing this um, X-ray, um, taking this is X-ray and, and uh, his application was rejected anyway. This is Monish um, and a friend from India and he applied uh, for visa to Bahrain to, to uh, and uh, were from South Asia or other places in Asia applying uh, for work visa. Uh, they go through uh, health control and, and uh, X-ray of chest for detecting tuberculosis or other diseases are, uh, is, is, uh, is uh, needed. Um, and um, uh, it's part of visa, uh, visa process. The word visa, comes from Latin word videre, which means to see, which a, uh, a letter, um, you know, as, as uh, this, is, this is also like the J in Jewish passport on the lantern or a candle in, in the hands of black people in New York. Um, it, it's a kind of, um, uh, the visa is part of uh, making these people observable, traceable uh, and dominated. A racial body has to be seeable. Um, this is Yusuf, uh, another friend from uh, Afghanistan. A young man, um, he was deported from Norway 2012 uh, to Kabul, uh, where he was never been there. He, um, he was born and grew up in Iran. 
he um, crossed border illegality run to join uh, his sister uh, and start cleaning the street uh, to survive. He was uh, uh, arrested, uh, deported. Uh, he came back to Iran. He was deported again. May 2020, he tried to cross border again to Iran, but he was shot in, in, um, in leg by the Iranian border guard. After hospitalization and uh, oppression, he was deported to Afghanistan. So he current, he, right now he's in a small town along the border between Iran and Afghanistan, washing dishes in a restaurant, saving money to pay a smugglers to cross border to join his sister. And this is Abbas. Abbas is a friend of mine um, in Iran at the same, same age, uh, we um, uh, grow up together uh, in the same village. Um, I, I escaped from the war, but he was sent to the war, Iran-Iraq war. Uh, and on the 17th of February, 1986, at the border between Iran and Iraq, around noon, the gates of hell opened. Saddam Hussein used chemical weapon. Uh, 20,000 people died and 120,000 others damaged. Survivors develop uh, harsh chronic complications. Many face a slow and painful death. Others are still suffering. Abbas is one of them. Chemical bombs produce in Europe. And um, he uh, is recognized as only 10% uh, damage veteran. So uh, he received uh, um, a very small uh, uh, compensation. So he is 10% included, he's 10% citizen. And this is, um, this is my father. This is why I started this project. And this is taken um, uh, November last year when I visited uh, Iran uh, after uh, my father uh, uh, suffered from a stroke and he lost uh, uh, speaking uh, ability. So it's very hard for him to, to, to find words. And, um, and what is relate, I mean, relates this, uh, his story to, to borders is that he never could have a passport. Before the revolution, he, the, 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 the state refused giving him a, a passport and after the revolution, same. So he had travel ban and I could not go either to Iran. So we had a long time separation. And that long time separation means silence, lack of conversation, ignorance, strangeness. So we became strange to each other. We didn't know about each other. We didn't know stories about each other, our sufferings, pains, happiness, etc. And uh, when I was back and I could not, uh, and he could not uh, talk, uh, uh, so I, I start looking at X-ray photos and I try to dig inside to find stories inside these photos to understand what has been missing in that conversation. Um, so this is um, uh, somehow haunting ghosts uh, from, you know, hunting ghosts, ghosts uh, uh, as a social figures as, as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Gordon Obner, uh, Gordon wrote about, um, um, Avery Gordon wrote about in Ghostly Matters. Um, so this is, this is, this is tracing, tracing stories, tracing last stories, last stories uh, for me. This is why I started this project. Um, okay, the last, the last one. 
the last photos I am showing you is uh, me myself. It is me 30 years ago. And this, uh, this photo, as you see on the uh, right side of my face, you see uh, fragments of a bullet. So 30 years ago, I was shot by a racist in Sweden, not far from where I am now, uh, Stockholm University campus. So it, a racist uh, shot many, many people. Uh, and not many, 10, 10 or 11 people, and I, I was one of them. Um, and uh, removing the, 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 the bullet fragments from cheekbones were so complicated that, that the doctors left them there. So this is a souvenir for me from, uh, from, um, uh, from, from that time, from the bordering gates, from uh, the souvenir of border gates. So what I have been trying to do tonight, uh, today for you in New York, is listening to x-ray photos. Following uh, Tina Camp, uh, uh, Tina Camp's idea. So uh, I, I, I want to not only look at uh, images or photos, but also watching and listening to images trying to see what is and see, visibilizing what is invisibilized, to use other senses, not only the visual one, um, but listen to vibrations and rhythm of photos. Uh, and let's uh, see how photos affect us, how not letting colors, details, backgrounds of ordinary photos uh, they usually they do uh, not averting our gates uh, from from the, the violence of borders and bordering practices. So this is my way to encounter with X-ray photos to make connections, to let vibration and waves strike me. The the X-ray photos are witnesses of violence, sexism, and racism, as we show. Uh, as we, we, we saw, uh, and as, as I said, uh, uh, Eric Gordon's idea about haunting goes to pay attention to histories of defeats, to history of silences, absences, oppressions. And in those photos, we see traces of violence and continuing of oppression showing that bordering and bordering, borders and bordering practices are in a sense colonial practices. And um, so this is not about all these photos I, sh I screened, I show you. For me, it's not isolated individual experiences, but rather collective and historical. So this image of with fragment of, of bullet uh, in my face is very much related to, 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 to the x-ray photos of, of those black workers uh, in, in, in the mines of diamonds in South Africa, or that Jewish uh, people in, in, in Auschwitz. Um, and and, um, and this, is, this is about a collective stories of defeated ancestors, my ancestors, slaves, Jews, Palestinians, Roma people, refugees, and documented, those who have been forced to be borders, those who have been raped, killed, lynched, gassed, etc. So only by remembering their defeated, only by remembering our defeated ancestors, would there be a chance for the ghosts to find the future? And this is what I try to do in this project, to find the future for my defeated ancestors and the ghosts in my life. Thank you. <laughs>